before I, uh, I talk about uh, Casa Mazo, uh, I was just reminded uh, to tell everyone that uh, your batch for the conference is good to visit La Pedrera uh, anytime today or tomorrow, okay? So just use it as your entrance to La Pedrera if you haven't seen uh, the house or the uh, wonderful uh, ten temporary exhibition they have on El Lisitsky, uh on the uh, first floor. Okay, uh, don't worry if, if this is the first time you hear uh, Rafael Mazot's name, you're not alone. Uh, Mazot was a Catalan architect born in uh, 1880 in the small city of Girona, 100 kilometers northeast of uh, here, of Barcelona. After a trip in 1912 that took him to Darmstadt, Hellerau, Munich, and other German towns, he basically abandoned Art Nouveau in favor of an architecture that adapted some of the principles of German regionalism, uh, also the uh, Vienna Secession and a uh, fair amount of British arts and crafts. That made him uh, a rarity here in Catalonia, and despite a rather successful career, his contributions fell into oblivion soon after his death in 1935, followed by the decay and demolition of several of his buildings. Fast forward to 2007, when the Rafael Mazo Foundation was established with the support of the Girona City Council, the College of Architects, and the Mazo family. During our brief existence, we've carried out the restoration of the architect's family home, known as Casa Mazo, which is one of his finest buildings. One could argue that Casa Mazo was always there, at least since houses were built along the river, outside the city's Roman walls in the 16th century. So it has always been part of Girona's iconic image, uh, since the days of prints and early postcards to the days of uh, uh, selfies and Instagram. Uh, one of these houses belonged to Mazot's maternal grandparents, and at the end of the 19th century, the architect's father was able to acquire two additional ones next to each other. So in 1910, the young architect was asked to unite the interiors and the uh, facades. Then in 1918, his older brother acquired a fourth house and the architect again uh, attached it to the hall and reorganized the facade the way we basically see it today. Mazon and his wife actually uh, planned to live on the third floor after their marriage, but the bride's father demands made it impossible so uh, that's another story. So his work on that floor was never completed. That's why most of, the, most of his interventions are concentrated on the ground floor, first and second floors, which were occupied by his family until the house was handed over to the city in 2007. The shining white, whitewashed facade overlooking the river contrasts with the opposite facade on the street which has an appearance of a small urban palazzo. Nevertheless, both facades are two sides of the same coin. They represent the dual character that Mazot wanted to embed in the family home, and in fact, to most of his architecture. Forms and materials of vernacular architecture are combined with a series of fully modern innovations to the point where the house offers a constant dialogue between tradition and modernity. Once they had become influential and well-known among the bourgeoisie of the city, the Mazos wanted a house that would symbolize their desire to be rooted in the city's medieval past, as well as their commitment to modernity with a certain degree of luxury and comfort. For instance, right when you come in, uh, you realize that Mazot combined vernacular materials such as stone, wood, ceramics, and wrought iron 
to turn a humble and simple structure into the house of a middle class family which wanted to project their new social status. The arrangement of the uh, green and uh, white ceramic tiles at the entrance together with the natural light coming down from a skylight at the top of the staircase create a sense of depth, uh, a sense of grandeur which would not otherwise be there. Same strategy was used on the first floor hall the prevalence of wood and cream and chocolate colors provide warmth to welcome the visitor. With the repetition of vertical lengthened geometric forms all around the room and the natural light again coming down from another skylight in the back, Mazo achieved the feeling of a sophisticated, ordered and sober space in accordance with the aesthetics of the modern urban interior. The dining room is the setting where Mazot could best express his conception of the home. Comfortable but austere, with attention to details, blended into a harmonious whole, and full of cultured references under a humble appearance. One of the basic elements of the decoration are the very thin strips of wicker that cover the walls, crowned by a wooden shelf, that goes around the whole room and uh, used to display small sculptures and decorative objects. Other ornamental elements that Mazon introduced were the two carbels um, and the plaster covered ceiling. However, the most outstanding elements are the objects designed by the architect himself, such as the imposing lamp, the colored glass doors, the cupboard, and the sideboard. From the dining room, you may step into the gallery, which runs all along the facade with unique views of the river and its many bridges. The rest of this floor is occupied by the library and office, the drawing room, the kitchen, the sewing room, and one of several bedrooms with Mazos furniture. Uh, there are more bedrooms on the second floor where you can also see the bathroom he designed in 1918 with colors and materials that actually turn it into one of the most surprising rooms of the house. In many ways, Casa Mazo embodies Mazo's contributions to Catalan architecture and design and his commitment to the transformative power of domesticity. Because he worked without the incomprehension or rejection he often encountered with his clients, here, he was able to bring together his unique blend of exquisite modern ideas and vernacular elements to improve the everyday lives of his family. The house opened to the public as a house museum in 2012 and has since become the foundation's headquarters. Besides guided tours, uh, we also offer a small library, an archive and a an, uh, temporary exhibition uh, space. Visits to the house are only on guided tours and we usually offer four visits per day to a maximum of eight people per group. During the summer months, we have uh, an additional evening tour. Of course, you may think this is still a, a rather a small amount of visitors. There is room to increase it, but only to a certain degree because our priority is, above all, the preservation of the house and its furnishings, as well as our ability to provide the best possible learning experience to all our patrons. Thank you very much.